Each of us has reasons for believing that our civilization is not sustainable. Too many people, declining energy deliveries, climate change, diminishing ore quality, species extinction, soil damage, falling water tables, increasing inequity, and rising conflict. However, if we designed a civilization with fewer of these trends, what analysis could confirm it would be sustainable? The analysis might be similar to the one used by NASA engineers when they designed the space station. Their model contained many variables. These variables describe the station's infrastructure, these the productive activities, these the populations, and these the supplies. These arrows describe the flow of astronaut labor to each activity, and these the flows of energy. The blue describes the flows of mass from each supply to each member of the population, each productive activity, and each infrastructure. The blue areas are bidirectional, denoting the mass flows both in and out of each variable. For example, water is delivered to the astronauts from supplies and their waste get recycled back to the supplies. The engineers ran this simulation until it showed living on the space station would not injure the astronauts. If these engineers created such a simulation for Spaceship Earth, the infrastructure might include houses, markets, hospitals, communication conduits, factories, farms, transport, schools, theaters, R&D labs, recycling military forts, and wells, mines, refineries, and power plants. The last two are our civilization's source of energy. Activities might include construction, maintenance, and operation of these infrastructures, plus activities that produce food, goods, education, health care, entertainment, conveyance, communication, R&D, extraction, waste management, recycling, and defense. Population could be described by people in development, people in leisure, workers, and people in retirement. The supplies might include extractions from the Earth's crust, minerals, metals, oil, gas, coal, and uranium, revenue from Earth's natural capital systems, for example, soil, air, water, flora, and fauna, and stockpiles of materials which have already been mined and refined but are not embedded in the infrastructure or produced inventory. This image can be converted into a program that plots the changes of each variable and each flow over time. When Meadows did this in 1972, their program looked like this. Their plots forecasted population rising, which did happen, and supporting resources falling, which did not. The error in forecasting might have been caused by enormous increases in the use of fossil fuels to produce additional food and to make up for the increased difficulty of acquiring materials. However, now that some of these fuel de deliveries are expected to fall precipitously in the next 30 years, the Meadows forecast that billions of people will perish may be correct. So let's do what the NASA engineers did propose changes in the flows and quantities in this model until we find a set where civilization won't collapse and cause injury. As a first step, we should consider removing extractable from the crust from the supply section because during this century the energy provided by coal, oil, gas, and uranium will be less than the energy expended to deliver it. Also, mining the remainable minerals and metals from the crust will take more energy than the energy to recycle them from the waste stream. Removing extractable from the crust allows removal of infrastructures like wells and mines and refineries and power plants. It also allows downsizing of transportation elements like pipelines, coal cars, and rail lines. It allows removal of some production activities, for example, extraction and the downsizing of these. This allows removal of some labor forces, for example, miners, and the contraction of others. In case you missed it, removing the extracting of oil, coal, gas, and uranium also removed the primary energy source of civilization.
There are other energy sources, solar voltaic, solar thermal, and wind turbines, but they are not exact replacements for the ones we removed. Oil in the past has richly supported our civilization, even after it used its own energy to facilitate its production and deliveries and supporting its workers. Conversely, wind turbines expanding their own energy to complete these tasks and repair and replace themselves may not have enough remaining energy to sustain civilization. One reason for this doubt is that these alternative energy sources are dilute and require an extra step, condensing before they are useful in running civilization. Think of a whiskey still creating alcohol. After you use it to build the still, heat the still, grow the corn, harvest the corn, and support the moonshiners, there may not be much left to power civilization. Dismal, as various energy condensing systems appear, we can insert each one into our simulation to de determine its actual capabilities. To make such a run using windmills, we have to add wind farms, collection grids, and energy storage devices. We have to expand construction, maintenance, operations, and recycling activities, and we have to increase the expenditures of labor, mass, and energy. We have almost completed a simulation which can tell us if the wind turbine-powered civilization is sustainable. Just a few more steps to eliminate the structural changes that occurred when we stopped extracting supplies from the crust. For example, this change stopped any increases in the mass of every material and metal in civilization. It means we either keep recycling the mass we have or we lose it forever. Constant mass also means constant population. Births must equal deaths. Workers retiring must equal people in development entering the workforce. And the amount of labor is constant. If you want to increase the number of teachers, you have to diminish the number of soldiers. If the population is constant, the base supporting goods and services to support them must remain constant or at least not diminish. Another factor in sustainable civilization analysis is that revenue from natural capital is constant. The interaction between the sun and the earth produces fixed revenue. A sustainable civilization's consumption cannot exceed this revenue. What remains in this image are the variables and flows of a wind-powered civilization. To be sustainable, groups of these variables and flows have to equal other groups. For example, energy produced equals the energy consumed in all these activities. Total mass of some material, for example, copper equals the mass of the copper distributed among infrastructure, goods and process, and stockpiles. Total population equals the people in development plus the people in leisure, plus the people at work, plus the people in retirement. Total labor equals the labor allocated to each productive activity. Total revenue has to be greater than what is used in the sum of all these activities. An additional concept that will perfect our analysis is that causal loops must identify and prevent losses of materials to waste. For example, mass flows from stockpiles to construction, from construction to infrastructure, from infrastructure to recycling, and from recycling to stockpiles must be leak-free or civilization loses this type of mass. For sustainable civilizations, causal loops also provide another guide to analysis. They help identify and prevent violations of causality. For example, energy limits food produced. Food produced limits population. Population limits labor. Labor limits construction. Construction limits infrastructure. Infrastructure limits produced energy. And produced energy limits food production. To start a search for a sustainable civilization, first answer these four questions. What process is condensing the sun's energy? What level of goods and services is supplied to each person? What percentage of the population works? And what is the revenue stream? Distribute your fixed supporting resources among the pie chart segments and identify the constraint loops. You will need a spreadsheet program that graphs the values of variables at points in time. 
each civilization design that is tested will show if it gracefully supports its members and ecosystem or kills its constituents and destroys the supporting environment. By performing this form of sustainable civilization analysis, we can know if our children's future will be bleak or bright.